Hello again. <laughs> um, I wanted to just try and grab one of these unconference slots just to share a little bit about a work in progress that we have um, at Endus um, and some ideas that we have about how we could apply that to GNOME. Um, almost as a response to Alan's talk where he said, you know, with his design hat on, I wish we had a way of getting feedback and metrics for my users so we could test the things that we're designing. Um, this is not really a talk about um, what Ennis is doing, it's more a proposal about what we could do in GNOME with some of the pieces that we've built. Um, so, why do you want product metrics? Why do you want to know what's happening once you've deployed your product on the world? You know, are you doing the right thing? Does it work for the user? Do people click this one or that one? Does it suck? Do people close it immediately? Um, is it achieving the desired impact? And how do we prioritize our constrained resources to make sure that we are placing our bets in the most worthwhile places and we are working on the things that are of more relevance and more importance to our users. So, um, Endless has been working with Mathieu, uh, Mathieu Bridon, um, has been helping us to basically delete our entire infrastructure for metrics because it was all you know, broadly terrible um, and replace it with um, a new component called Azafia, which uh, is open source, it's on GitHub. Um, so we are trying to improve the usefulness and the transparency of our metric system. Um, so, we have basically three types of metrics. We have activations, which are sent once per machine. They are identifiable, they have a serial number, um, but they're sent only once. So, there's no way to correlate or track that because we never send that information in any, any other form and any other time. Um, this allows us to know which make and model of machine turns up where in the world. How does our supply chain work? How long does it take? Um, where is the inventory going? Um, this is also a request from some of our partners that they could see some of this information for their products. Um, we have pings that we send each day. Um, these are anonymous, so they're designed to be non-identifiable. Um, we're hoping to have that tested by an external consultant to make sure that we're not actually inadvertently collecting data that you could correlate, and we don't want that. These are um, built into the OS, so they're sent once each day, um, and the entire point is to be able to count user attention. So roughly, if we can geolocate to a, an area of the world and know how many people there are there, um, that's good for us to know. Then we have some idea of where are we, where are we sticking and where are we uh, missing. Um, and usage metrics. So this is, I think, the more interesting from the perspective of refining your products. This is where we actually have the ability to capture uh, detail. Um, and with the detail comes the risk, right, that we have ca captured too much, that we're invading privacy, um, that we have information that becomes trackable. Um, so at the moment, this system is turned on or off with a switch in our first boot um, experience. Depending on where you are in the world, then that's defaulted to on or off, depending on how you got your endless system. Um, so there are specific metrics that we look for here, things like um, when you start and, stall, uh, start and stop apps, when you install them, um, when, when you log in or out, so the times of day the machine is used, uptime, things like the OS version, if you try and play a video in Totem but we don't have the right codec, if you try and launch uh, an executable uh, that's a Windows executable, and then of course it's not supported, but that tells you that someone has gone and downloaded a program and they want to run it on their computer. Um, so the idea here is that we look at this information in the aggregate. It's not about a particular individual user, but it's about identifying common problems so that we can refine the products and prioritize uh, the work that we're doing to fix it. So uh, here's a diagram. Um, we have two clients because we have two systems. Um, so the phone home sends the pings and the activation messages. Um, and we have the event recorder, which is uh, in memory and on disk circular buffer of events. So as events are reported by different things on the system, they go in the buffer. When we have internet connection, then we send them to the server side. Um, there are two things to feed the events in. One is a library, so that essentially wherever you are in your program, you can uh, make a debug call or use the library in JavaScript or Python or GDIB um, and report something. I would like to measure the time spent from the start to the stop, or the user clicked this button, or this bad thing happened. Um, metrics instrumentation is a system-wide thing, so it collects kind of system facts. So things like network connectivity, or um, uptime, um, the version of the OS, how much free disk you have. So stuff which gives us sort of demographic data about uh, the endless users and allows us to make decisions uh, about product priorities. Um, the server bit, which is what we've been rewriting, um, receives those events. Um, they're queued in Redis, and they go to our new component, Azafia, written in Python, um, and we essentially pass those events, we demarshal the G variants, we deduplicate the stuff, um, and we place it into a Postgres database. Um, then you can basically attach whatever you want onto that and make queries. So um, I tried something called Metabase, I just ran it in Podman, and then I made some pretty graphs. You saw one of them this morning. Um, Redash and whatever, you can just write SQL queries against the data. 
Um, so that's roughly what we're doing uh, and roughly why we're doing it. Um, but really what this talk is about is um, how can we use these things to help them? How can we make the design team's job easier so that they have the ability to pose questions to the users of GNOME and uh, make experiments so that they can have their questions answered. Um, I think the requirements of GNOME are different to the requirements of Endless. Um, Endless has, in a sense, uh, a, a commercial reason to collect data. We have a product in market. We have um, terms of use that govern the OS, and we have uh, a dialogue with the user that's not the same as the context that GNOME operates in. Um, I, in fact, would like to make our stuff better by some of these requirements, and probably if I'm going to implement something or help to implement something in GNOME, then I'll also use it in Endless. So um, something about the data that we collect is that by definition, once you've answered the questions that causes you to collect that data, then the data suddenly becomes far less valuable. So I think once our system works and we've, able, we've been answered the questions that cause us to collect this data, we can essentially delete the data because those questions are answered. Right? We don't need this big thing that constantly monitors all of these things. It's data that we shouldn't keep long term. Uh, well, legally we can't, right? Um, for GNOME, these requirements need to be a bit more nuanced. Trust, right? So the GNOME Foundation, we're a non-profit. The GNOME Project um, has a brand and a reputation and it relies on goodwill and it's trying to do good in the world. Um, so above all, the number one requirement is trust. And then if we're going to do anything, it needs to be useful, right? We have to be able to actually provide some service to the project and to the teams that actually help to build our product. Um, so, yeah, there's maybe a tension here if you mess it up. Um, this is a proposal of maybe how we can not mess it up. So, transparency. This is, I think, the most important thing. It's the first in the list. Um, we need to be very clear to everyone what is collected and why. Um, you know, legislation requires this in many cases. Um, it should be clear to the user when data is sent to us and why, and for what purpose we're collecting that data. Privacy, right? We want to be able to have, you know, G-Edit, I'm considering a new UI, I want to do an A-B test, I want to change this up. Um, they want a report that tells them, like, the result of their test. So we have to be able to have a system in place that guarantees that when we get the data and we share it with someone, that we are not then violating someone's privacy. We haven't revealed information that can be used to track or identify those users. So, you know, privacy is a requirement. Um, necessity, or, or the data collection should be necessary. So. Um, I was talking to Carl from System76 about this particular point, which is that you don't need to just collect data from everywhere in order to have a statistically significant result. Right? You should design uh, a system that allows you to collect data from enough users to answer your question, and then you should stop. So we need to use you know, probability and to correctly you know, run our experiments and have a look at things um, so that we collect the bare minimum of data and no more. Optional. Obviously. <laughs> um, this is a controversial issue. Um, we need to deploy a system um, that people have complete trust in. Uh, and so it needs to be very clear when people are participating in any data collection activity um, and that we operate with explicit consent. Um, and for me, um, you know, I, on Wednesday, no, on Thursday, I sat with the GNOME Advisory Board and was around the table with many of the distributors um, who produce event, um, operating systems and devices that Endless need, that GNOME needs <laughs> to keep cooperating with um, in order to actually reach our users. So we depend on all of those vendors and all of those partners to actually get out to the user base. Um, so if we implement something and it's great and everyone who's running the like GNOME continuous ISO is able to send us like really valuable results and then everyone who actually uses GNOME in practice is like, oh, it's been patched out because, you know, Fedora didn't like it, it's been patched out because, you know, it wasn't okay. You know, we failed, right? I've implemented something that is then, you know, supposed to help GNOME but it affects no real change. So whatever we do has to be acceptable to those partners. So there's a lot of stakeholder management here. So what am I suggesting? Um, broadly speaking, the server side is, is relatively boring, right? But I think we have all these pieces that we can reuse to build this solution. Um, so a lot more of this is about what happens on the client and how do we manage that. Um, so my idea is to do something that's similar in, in, in principle to Mozilla Pioneers. Um, so this is an opt-in program where you, you know, Mozilla prompts you, like, would you like to take part? Um, I don't know, probabilistic or something, but it asks you if you want to take part. And you know, that's the kind of off and on switch for this entire system. 
um, yeah. would you like to help Gnome improve the product by taking part in experiments from time to time? Yes, All right. Um, that basically hooks you up to a system that delivers uh, from Gnome infrastructure to your computer um, experiments. Experiments are code, so they can do stuff. They could ask you a question, they could turn on an experimental feature in GNOME Shell and then see whether the performance gets better or worse. Um, they can activate some, some other kind of UI A-B testing. Um, they could even just pop up a message and ask a question to you. Um, or they can just take a look and see how many times you launch Builder and how long you stay in it or whatever, right? So this is powerful, right? We're running code on the systems, so we need to make sure that all of the other requirements are met. Um, so experiments should be targeted, right? We can only collect data when it's relevant and necessary for the question in hand. Um, we can have some filters on the client, so it decides if it's even going to look at one of these experiments which is currently running. Um, yeah. Is it the right distro? You know, do you have two monitors or one? Um, have you ever launched this program before or are you a first time user? So ways that we can actually filter on the client whether it's even going to bother sort of getting into this whole experiment that, that's going on. Um, anonymous by design. Um, that's probably the thing that uh, I need to change most urgently with the Ender system is that, that we use machine IDs, systemd machine IDs, so that's, that's perpetually trackable and that actually uh, makes me very uncomfortable. Um, we have a way of resetting that. Um, one of our ideas is basically to have a systemd timer that just resets it like every couple of days anyway. Um, but the, some of the things that you want to collect you need to be able to track for a certain period of time. Um, so within the context of an experiment, then the client can put all this data together and then send it. But from one experiment to the next, there should be no way to correlate the results of these experiments. Um, I'd have mentioned this, this idea of this probability, right? We, we should only run the experiments enough to have uh, statistical confidence in the results that we're seeing. We don't need to run them everywhere. We don't need to push this thing as like, oh, it's go, everyone is gonna get you know, a different GNOME shell mode. You know, we want to have a probability factor or something that we include, um, hash something and decide whether this bit is set or not, whatever. Right? We need a way that we can only, we run the experiments within the scope that's, that's worth running them in. Transparency, I mean, it was a requirement. It's a result, it, it has to be implemented in the system. Right? All the experiment code is public and it's reviewed before deployment. It's up there, everyone can see what it is that we're doing, why collecting it. Um, time limited, so these experiments should have a shelf life right? for a week. We're going to see how many times you launch Firefox because that will tell us blah, whatever it is that we're trying to find out. At the end of the week, then a little thing pops up. It's like, hey, we've been tracking um, you know, browser usage in GNOME in order to better integrate cloud services with your file manager, whatever, right? Um, we've collected this data, click, you can see what it is. Are you happy to share this with GNOME to help improve the experience? Yes, send. Um, to be useful, the system also has to be available for the different projects and the different partners around the GNOME ecosystem to submit experiments. I, I, with my endless hat on, I would be interested in putting experiments in that would answer questions that help to guide you know, our product as applied to endless users, so we could have an endless specific thing, um, or to answer questions that would help us to contribute better to upstream so that we can reconcile between endless needs and the needs of other GNOME systems. So you know, if your Nautilus maintainer and you want to answer that question, then your Nautilus maintainer should be able to send an experiment, like what are you doing with, with the file manager? Um, and then before any of this actually happens, um, we need to make sure that we have a robust oversight system. We actually have to have a committee that represents the relative stakeholders, uh, the relevant stakeholders, um, and can actually see what are we collecting, why are we collecting it, do we need to collect it for this long, is this information necessary to answer the question, are we collecting enough or too much? Um, and in a sense, make sure that all of the requirements are met um, before we put something live into our lab, lab server and the experiments are available to people. So that's kind of it, right? That's my kind of straw man. Um, I'd be interested in, I guess, designing and implementing such a thing if you think such a thing is acceptable um, and useful. But I guess different people in the room, depending on what hats you have, um, what do you think, right? Um, if you were a, a module maintainer, would you use such a thing? If you were an end user, would you turn it on and actually take part in some of these? Um, and if you're a distributor or you make a product, then is this something that you could advocate for within your company or within your communities? Would they be happy to have a GNOME thing that would do this?
probably as you say, it's interesting and also um, concerning. Um, particularly the one I kind of concern with the part that says availability with partners. So I will have, well, I would expect a more clear definition what kind of partner could be, um, because one ca we can have some idea for now, but it would change may uh, like maybe later in the future. And what kind of data we will share with them, um, particularly because anonymity is hard. There are many projects that have been anonymized data, and still you can de-anonymize, which is one of the major challenges that companies have, and usually that is the reason they have privacy engineers. Um, and I think talking with Mozilla people might be the right uh, thing to do, but I know that in the case of Mozilla Pioneers, they have some projects that they couldn't anonymize the, the information that we were collecting from some users. So I don't know, I, I've seen that, I don't know, if there are not many users, for example, from Chile, if I submit my information automatically, even though I don't have submit any personal information, it could be de-anonymized easily. So it's, um, it's something that should be um, uh, to, take, uh, to try to take care of. It's like, I, I'm not opposing to the idea, I'm just saying that raising my concerns. Yeah, no, that, that is the most important thing to take care of. Right? So, so the idea is that we, we design the system in such a way that that's the default setting, that you end up in a way that because we're collecting so little data for limited time periods that essentially you end up with something that's not a trackable attribute, so you're not de-anonymizing anything. And obviously, I'm not an expert in this. We would need to actually maybe as the foundation to engage an expert so that they could help advise us in putting a procedure in place that ensures we don't you know, go outside of what's a, a safe version of this. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that's the concern. <laughs> yeah. And a follow-up is um, in one of the first slides you have, um, the idea is just to know more or less what is the impact we have. But I think as a project, the thing I would like to have is some kind of usability information to know what do the user actually use in the, in the case if I have uh, my application running. But I don't know if that is out of the scope. Well, that's kind of why the idea is that it's a system that delivers experiments, and those experiments can be quite arbitrary, um, so that we're not presupposing the type of information that, that we could collect. Obviously, we need to separately answer whether we should collect it, but at least you know, one experiment could be pop up a banner and ask a user a question, and then that could be something. Right? You know, so um, that can be fine. That's, you know, that, that's a decision that, that we need to make in the kind of oversight process of deciding which experiments to publish. Uh, so from a uh, design perspective, uh, this seems really useful, and it's something that I would want to use. And like, there are specific examples of things I've worked on pretty recently where we've been asking these kind of questions as part of the design process and just haven't had answers like, you know, looking at boxes and, you know, do, how many boxes do boxes users typically have? Are they for, like, uh, graphical machines or are they for servers? Like, this kind of influences what the, the UI ends up looking like and it's kind of hard to come up with a, a, a good design without like knowing that, and we can guess, but that's all we're doing. We're just guessing on our own anecdotal experience. So, yes, definitely that kind of stuff, like um, specific kind of usage patterns. Also, like the, the higher level stuff, like which apps are people using the most, and all that kind of stuff would be very useful. Um, within that, a, a few concerns, and I think a few things we'd need to get right. Um, I think one perennial concern, and I've been talking with Tobias about this, is sampling. Like, um, I think one thing we've often been nervous about in the past is if we're having people self-select to participate, then that you end up with biased results, and would often be like it becomes hard to interpret results on that basis. So, I mean, there are established ways of countering those kind of bias, whether you um, just have really big samples, <laughs> or um, you can do more kind of stratified sampling, but that would require that you to, to screen your participants. And we might need to think about that and, and have a more kind of stratified sampling approach, which is more work, but I think would produce high quality data. Um, the other thing, slight concern, is that I think 
data without effective analysis can be quite a dangerous thing uh, because you end up drawing the wrong conclusions from it. Um, so having tooling and expertise in place to actually do data analysis because, and I mean, that's partly from the, the side of um, making sure that we're, we understand what the numbers are telling us, but also just from a workload point of view, like the data collection is only half the task. Like, like doing good data analysis is a lot of work. Um, so we, we're going to need some somebody or some facility for doing this, because otherwise, the just the collecting the data won't be enough. And you know, I don't have a week to spend, nor do I have the expertise to, to actually sit down and you know, like. In the past, I did do some kind of social research stats, and I was really bad at it. So I know how, how complicated <laughs> it can be, and why we need some like somebody who knows what they're doing to kind of look at that for us. So right, Brits volunteered. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, is it me? I've got the mic. Are we? What? What? I can't but, see. Okay. Who has that Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> you were confused up there. I was confused. Uh, I, yeah. Um, so I can't imagine this possibly being turned on for enterprise Linux, but that's not my domain of <laughs> Linux anyways. But I, I can see this in Fedora. Um, I think there definitely will be privacy concerns that we would have to address. Um, and I also share the selection uh, concern. But there's also the, the, this kind of branding issue that we're still all kind of wrestling with, with the, it's Linux, it's Fedora, it's GNOME, and so I am, am concerned with users understanding who is asking to run the experiment, you know, is Fedora doing this, what is a GNOME, you know, um, and the user experience of that. I don't think that's an um, unsolvable problem, but I want to make sure that it's, it, it's clear yeah, uh, I want to make sure that what it, however it's presented, it's clear. You know what you're opting into and who gets that and who what the benefit of it is. Which I think also, you know, when people see what the benefit of it, it it's a for the privacy concerns. When you see that you are basically you know giving this information in exchange for something, it makes people a lot more likely to accept it rather than I'm just giving my information to some big company for them to sell for advertising. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the. The banning question you could also, uh, and some of that kind of say commercially actionable information or things and, and who you're interacting with, you could set up technology that would allow you to improve that. So, you know, are you happy to share this information with Fedora in order to improve your desktop experience? Fedora will share it with GNOME, they wrote this stuff. Or, you know, so there, there are ways to kind of ameliorate that somehow. Um, that would require a bit more thinking about how you plumb that up, right? Because it's not really, um, I kind of, I'm thinking of relatively simple, like not too many factors experiments where you, you're maybe doing an A-B test and then you're monitoring one outcome or something so that your data analysis becomes a little bit easier as well. Um, then the number of people that have been sampled could be handled on a Fedora server and the results could be shared with GNOME and then you have this kind of firewall where you're untrusting my vendor but then it is shareable and actionable by GNOME. So, you know, it's a it's a whole conversation that um, kind of factors into how the system is designed. Right. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we are running out of time. So, thanks, Robert. Thank you. And we'll be have uh, the lightning talks in five minutes at four o'clock.